Yeah. Thank you, real estate on the air. Here we are. Good morning. Laura, you're up. I'm reading Put the... your phone down. <laughs> I was reading an email. Yeah, I know, so I see that. Yeah. Well, you have your computer. Why well, do you have your computer with you? Because one of the things you wanted to talk about today was a continuation of the conversation we started two weeks ago. Which was what? Buyer agency. Oh, and what did you want to continue about it? I actually did. I wanted to interrupt that conversation to talk about something else. Oh, so you're interrupting me. No, Let's I, I make wanna, note of that, please. No, I want to just, <laughs> I want to, I want a hiatus in the conversation about buyer agency. Oh, okay. For a moment, just because there's been an update on something we talked about two months ago or so. Oh, okay. Update away. Do you want to know what the subject is? Oil and gas. <laughs> I assumed in the update you would tell us what yeah, the subject probably. was. That was yeah. kind of my assumption. All right, so do you remember what we talked about with respect to oil and gas two months ago? What I, what I advised you of as a realtor? Um, I think at this time it's somewhat vague. Yeah, it had something to do with title and if title insurance companies aren't insuring things and this is stuff a test. like that. This yeah. is a test. How did yeah. I do? Not but you know, so, I don't have to remember that stuff because I have you. Yeah, right. So, yeah, no, the, the, the big issue was that title insurance underwriters had insisted or required their agents to include in commitments and in title policies an exception for subsurface rights. And so we started seeing late June, early July of last year uh, and up to current uh, issuance of title commitments and policies this added exception. So now buyers, sellers, realtors, and lawyers have to beware of this particular exception. And when we talked two months ago, the, the uh, mandate from the underwriters was that the title insurance agents were not going to be permitted to remove that exception. They were not going to be permitted to even conduct a search for oil and gas interest. They Is were that not true in uh, Jackson County too but, with well, the American Tile and Mid-State Tile? Yeah, let, let me finish up. They Ron were should also, call it and confirm it. Okay, let me finish. Okay. And that is that in addition that the title insurance company could not conduct an independent search for oil and gas even if you paid them for it. That was the initial position. I, I did a bunch of checking with different agents and underwriters. Uh, a couple of the underwriters were changing that uh, and the agents were changing it so that you could uh, not remove the exception, but you could get a title search for oil and outstanding oil and gas interest or subsurface interest rather, if you paid a fee of three hundred dollars. But I still couldn't get title insurance. I worked with a title insurance company at a closing right after we got back from vacation uh, over in Macomb County, and it is. And we had this discussion. They checked with the underwriter. They checked with the uh, underwriter's attorneys. This was a uh, I don't remember if it was a first American policy. Uh, at any rate, it's one of the fidelity companies. And uh, they are uh, willing to remove the exception with respect to subsurface rights without paying an additional fee. All it will take is an affidavit from the seller with respect to the fact that there is no development on the land and it will require search. But at least this company is going to remove the exception upon request. So that's a first order of business. If you are a, a buyer of real estate in the state of Michigan now and you want to get title insurance insuring your right to the subsurface rights, including very valuable oil and gas rights, you have to ask for removal of that particular exception. Second, check as a seller now if the purchase agreement says that you are going to agree to provide a policy without standard exceptions. The way most of the language reads in the form purchase agreements or which is added to the form purchase agreements is that the seller agrees to provide a policy without standard exceptions however the buyer will pay for the survey if a survey is required to remove the survey exception. I don't want to get too esoteric here but realtors and lawyers doing this stuff are supposed to know what this is all about. Now if the title insurance company is willing to remove the subsurface exception and insure it you need to find out if the title insurance company is going to charge you a fee for doing so and then in the purchase agreement you're going to have to put a clause as to who's going to pay that fee. Is it going to be the seller or the buyer? And what I would do 
as a seller or a buyer or an attorney or a realtor is look for a title insurance company like the one I was working with in Macomb County which says we will not charge you a fee for removal of that exception because some companies are going to want to charge a fee some are not charging a fee Work, look for a company that's not going to charge the fee. I don't know what American title's position is these days, or a mid-state title, or attorney's title. All I know is that some title insurance companies are saying, yes, we will provide a search for a fee, but we won't insure. Some are saying, we will insure, we'll charge you a fee. And I know of at least one company that's willing to say, we will remove it without a fee. So, uh, what are the downfalls of using it? Let, let's say our lo two local uh, title companies charge you a fee for it and somebody doesn't want to pay a fee so they go to the title company used in Oakland County. What's the downfall of using an out of community title company? I don't even know if the company in Macomb has the ability or the contacts or the relationship with somebody locally to conduct the search. So that, that may not be an option. All I'm right. suggesting, and, and this is all brand new, I mean what I'm <clears throat> talking to you about is something that happened three weeks ago when I got back from vacation. I had a closing. Uh, the exception was actually not in this particular policy even though the underwriter was requiring it. And I had a great series of conversations and communications with the agent and the underwriter in which it turned out that the agent was not doing what the underwriter had directed and so we worked out this, this uh, I'll call it process or methodology for getting policies issued without the subsurface exception without payment of the fee. So I don't know, I haven't talked to uh, Bob Newman or uh, Ron Ellison here at American Title since being back. I want to have that conversation with them, see what their underwriter is saying that uh, they are or are not permitted to do. I don't know the answer to that yet. I, I think that if, it, it's sort of like dominoes, if one company s says we are going to insure uh, without an additional fee, all we require is an affidavit, then I suspect other underwriters and other agents are going to fall in line because they're not going to be competitive. You're going to charge a $300 fee to a, a seller or a buyer to either remove the exception or simply to do the search. To, if I'm able to do it, I'm going to go to a company that's not going to charge my client a fee. You look, you, you look perplexed. Yeah. Uh -uh. All right. Yeah, but you understand what I'm saying? In other words, it's, it's kind of a big deal. 300 bucks is what was being charged. Well, except for if I have to go out of town, let's say our local title companies charge a fee, and I don't know if they will do or not. I've got a closing right after this at Mid-State. I can ask. Ask, ask them. Will you? Ask Mid-State. Is it? Yes. I thought it was, okay, American. Right. So I thought talk, it was Talk to Bob Sorry. Newman. Uh, talk to Bob. I have not, and Bob may be listening and uh, wants to call in and, and we can have this conversation on the air. Uh, or Bob, call me uh, on my cell phone and uh, let's talk about what's going on. Because I, the last conversation I had with Bob about this was I was able to talk to them about at least doing the search. The fee was going to be 300 bucks. That was... Well, right. But, so that's where I was going with that is that, to me... If the title, if our local title companies charge a fee, I, I think there's far more danger using an out of community title company than there is paying the fee. I'm, I'm, so, not, I'm not necessarily persuaded of that fact. However, I, I like working with <coughs> local companies because uh, we have an ongoing relationship with them. But uh, well, I, I mean, my, I've seen too wait, many wait, wait, closings. Wait, wait, in my last where, wait, in my last conversation with American Title. Uh, they were willing to do a search but not remove the exception and that's a big difference. What I'm looking for is actual removal of the exception. I think uh, that's Ron calling right now. Yeah, it could be, I would, I would hope. Um, <laughs> but we'll have that conversation, we'll find out the answer to it and then next week we can uh, uh, give an update to everybody. But this is a significant issue with respect to buyers and sellers of real estate. Well, but that leads me to the it begs to ask the question, what are the downfalls of yeah, using a yeah. title company that's out of the area? I mean, because I've seen a lot of people even, oh, see, there's Ron right now. Let's put him on the put phone. All right. Um, if the minerals were severed, there's probably not going to be a charge. If, if 
So I've got a situation where um, we have to go back behind somebody else's title work or whatever, 30 or 40 years. Um, I'm not going to do that for free, and I don't think anybody's going to do that for free. So I, I don't think that the $300 is a hard, fast fee, at least here it's not. Bob and I have had that discussion. So. All right. Well, let me let, let me. Yeah, let's. The, the, the first disclaimer is Ron Ellison's a good friend of mine, and so is, is Bob Newman. Uh, and I, I love these guys, and I love American Title. Uh, I included Bob in my exchange with the uh, fellow at the other company, Aaron Arnold, uh, and I, I actually I, I did talk with Bob about it, and and he, we had that conversation about how far back to go with respect to the title search, and so I actually raised that with Aaron. And at least that particular company, and I, and I won't name it because it's over in Macomb and, and I don't even think they would do a search over here. But uh, Ron, they're saying it irrespective of the, the distance they go back or whether or not they're relying upon somebody else's policy. And I understand the risk for a company in relying upon somebody else's policy because Laura actually made a very good point about the fact that there are some companies who are not as reliable as American or Oh my gosh, or I've seen, we've seen people come in just in front of council and say, well, we didn't know this uh, assessment was on our property or charge was on our property and it's because they used a not a town title company. And that's the first question I ask them is, who was the title company that closed it? And I don't think there's been a single local title company that's ever been mentioned when one of those items are missed. Yeah, and, and let's continue this conversation because the, the corollary issue is if there is going to be a fee, who's going to pay for it and we better address it in the purchase agreement because if I've got a clause in there that says seller agrees to provide a policy without standard exceptions and then we have that language to say if a survey is required the buyer will pay the fee, then we're going to have to address if there's going to be a fee for removal of the subsurface exception who's going to pay that and I think every realtor listening to this conversation and every lawyer listening to this conversation, the two or three that are actually listening, uh, ought to pay attention to that because this is going to be an issue. I can hardly wait for people to get down to the closing and all of a sudden there's a $300 fee there and they're going to wrangle over who is responsible for it and somebody's going to get mad at, at you or me or somebody else at the closing for not having dealt with it. Correct. That, that, that's correct. Yeah, and I included I included Bob in that conversation. Yeah. Well, Bill, here's what I'm going to say: is I want to see how a title company in another county, without sending someone over here, is going to do a adequate and proper search of the minerals. Because sometimes you have to physically go up to the register and even look at things. So I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I could say. I mean, in other words, they're going to say that. Are they really going to do the work, or are they rolling the dice? No. No, I don't think they're going to do it. And the only reason I mention that is, and, and, and I said they're up, the, the company I dealt with is up in Macomb County. They, yeah. they deal in metropolitan Detroit. And I'm not suggesting that. But I'm, there I'm, are I'm, companies. I, what, what, what I'm saying to you is that we have to have a conversation here so that when we're dealing with local companies or companies that are actually doing searches here, uh, that, that in fact we cover this particular issue and that we get it straightened out so everybody knows exactly what's going to happen, whether there is going to be a fee, whether there isn't, whether I have any alternatives, whether those alternatives are reasonable. You and I are on the same page. That makes sense, but, and there are companies, correct me if I'm wrong, Ron, that still come in from out of town, title companies, to do work, whether it's for foreclosure companies or or whomever, aren't there? Oh, well, sure. And, and well, i got to file my desk right now where I'm writing a letter where we did the mortgage policy. Yeah, there's no no doubt. Again, you know, I mean, you and I are on exactly the same page here, and you know, I love do, you. Do so. outside com do outside companies, Ron, um, typically ask for your help when they're doing searches? Uh, no. Okay. No, in other words, they'll ask for a copy of our work, and that takes a lot of guts. Yeah. Um, and I don't <laughs> you don't want to come over here, or, or, or you don't, you know, because again, let's talk about associations. You know, we've got all the phone numbers. Right. And, and, right. And, um, again, in this town, we're pretty lucky. I mean, the state does a great job. So, if, um, if you bring somebody in from out of town, 
that's why, you know, there are certain spots we won't look for. Shoot, I had a um, closing in Calhoun County, and I don't usually like to go outside of count, out county, and uh, the title company missed a whole property and that we're dealing with. It was two properties that we were closing on, and they uh, they missed a whole a whole property. <laughs> so, anyhow. Yeah, I mean, my, my point in raising this in the first place is that it is, it's an issue that needs to get resolved, and it's been in flux, actually, since last June, because, you know, Bob and I, particularly, Bob Newman and I, have had this ongoing conversation and then because I'm doing closings throughout the state, I'm encountering other companies uh, and the, the policies are going all over the lot. As a matter of fact, Bob and I, in the, the communication with the other company, you know, they found out that they were not following the directive from Fidelity, which, you know, they're supposed to be following. They're following the directive, but they're taking a different tack than what you guys had been doing. So what I want to do is continue the conversation with you guys so that if I can persuade you not to charge my clients a fee, I'd love to do that. <laughs> and, and you know, and, and and let's let's all get on the, the same page. I guess is what I'm saying. I really appreciate you calling in. Uh, yeah, and, and Bill, I'm gonna, you know, kind of a broad statement. Um, if if I were in Calhoun County or Hillsdale County, where minerals and stuff like that are Yeah, and we're starting we are, to get. We're, we are adapting to an environment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've you've got uh, exploration and I think production now out on the east side and the northeast uh, part of the county. So, you know, thing, things are happening uh, despite the plummeting of the natural gas prices. There is still exploration going. Well, I'll make a statement, and Greg will hold me to it. If they keep exploring east of here and they get to Manchester, I'll start doing this for free. <laughs> They might. You never know. All right. And for those listeners that don't know, Ron lives in Manchester. Yes. All right. Hey, Ron, thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. Ron Ellison, American Title Company. Well, that's that. Let's end, this, end uh, your conversation on that. Well, I, I hope you found it interesting, Laura. Well, I did. Okay, good. And, uh, <laughs> Not well, me. It's the audience that... Is important. No, no, no. If I can interest you, I can interest anybody. Mm, whatever. <laughs> but I'll, I'll talk to Bob and Ron this week and uh, get an update. Okay, a couple things on houses. Uh, 3310 West Morale. It's a very uh, nice ranch. Uh, one owner house, 149.9, and that's like on four and a half acres, right close to town. It's east of Robinson Road, so it's a great location. 2654 Virginia Court, 139 Cream Puff, with lake access to Lake Clark Lake. And then uh, 6190, 6200 Spring Arbor Road is a large parcel, 30 acres. does have a big 6,700 square foot pole barn on it, house that needs to be demolished. We've reduced that price to 249.9, 30 acres right there on Spring Arbor Road in the front. Part of the parcel is zoned commercial. 3128 Lori Drive, Western School District, 124.9, three bedrooms, one and a half baths. 1414 West Washington, which is the backyard that butts up to my sister Martha, so you know that adds value right there. Uh, we've reduced the price. That's, that house is solid structure, needs to be totally renovated, beautiful location. Uh, 80, we're down to 89.9 on that house. Uh, Mulligan Drive, we got two lots. You have to buy two, but you get both of them for 30,000. That's great. It overlooks uh, the seventh fairway of the, one of the country club courses. And then 2701 Forest Lake, which is the corner of Horton Forest Lake, across the street from the country club um, Pines Golf Course. One, that's reduced to 109.9, three bedrooms, two baths, ranch. And last but not least, we have an amazing race. All We're gearing up for the next amazing race. So the watch party, come join us, is um, the 25th, which is what? The, this, Wednesday. this Wednesday from 9 to 11 at Chase Bar and Grill downtown. Wednesday night? Wednesday night, 9 to 11. Questions? 780-3800.